What's up, everybody? It's your favorite long tongue friend's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the Revel Tech Venom. This is on loan to me from Mr. Chris Pinkerton. You might know him from a little show by the name of Realm of Collectors. Great show, part of the Cool Table Network, and a personal friend of mine. So he let me hold this, and I was uh, grateful for it. He also let me hold the Spider Man to do a comparison, so we'll get there. But first, we have to talk about accessories. So he comes with. These four pieces here, which are like symbiote add-ons that plug into his back, and we'll show that. Uh, I just want to talk about them briefly before we do. So they have the same detailings that are on the figure, so we'll talk about that there. With the exception of the silver that's added on in a dry brushing manner, I think. At first I thought it was airbrushed, but the closer I look at it, I think it was, de yeah, it's definitely dry brushed on. And it's, 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 it's done well enough. So all of them have this joint here, which is a ball hinge, and then it swivels at both ends. And and then another additional ball hinge that swivel at both ends here. And then they have all these, I think that this, yeah, so like you can plug in different, there's different variations. So there's a plug on this one, and then there's a plug on this one for a total of two, which can plug into his shoulders. Uh, and then you can kind of... Um, create whatever look that you're looking for you know with using the symbiote which is cool it's a smart way of doing it and, and we'll take a look at it a little bit later on I just wanted to introduce it to you as a concept the other thing is a display base which is fine it's just not quite enough uh, it's not quite enough for a figure of this size that has this many capabilities I'm familiar with this type of display base and without the webbing like the, the spider-man had uh, this does have some limitations in that regard and then extra uh, hinges here ball hinges here and then lastly he comes with a different uh, head for an eye expression and a tongue which is a pink with like a maroonish uh, wash over top that picks up all those little details and looks really good it's a really well sculpted tongue for what it's worth quite nice uh, I'll show you how to do that real quick um, there's just a port right there for the tongue that's easy enough fairly self-explanatory I'm pretty sure you could have done this without my help and to be honest the head isn't much different you just pull this off it's a plug there and then you can take this one and put it on and that gives you the much more uh, sinister uh, kind of eye expressions. Now if you take the tongue out you can close the mouth all the way so that's sort of a matter of how you want to handle uh, or do business. Now let's talk about the detailings here because it's not much to talk about um, you know and, and then we'll talk about the articulation because I think we'll be able to move through this a bit uh, more efficiently. So uh, we will talk about the head independently when we get there. So you have the white painted spider which is done really well and uh, you know, it's it's throughout the midsection piece. You could argue that the midsection piece might have needed to be a little longer. I wouldn't debate that with you, but it's all clean. It's also clean on the back and looks great. The figure itself, to me, it looks like this is all a finish. Um, if it's not, it's a great plastic choice. It's beautiful. It's like a metallic, like blackish, purplish color. It looks fantastic. Uh, it really, I mean, it, it probably evokes the character more than any other Venom figure I've ever seen in my life in terms of color. Really does a great job. Uh, and then the sculpt, we have all the musculature that's sculpted and then all the, uh, the vascular nature, like throughout, or, you know, maybe that's just more symbiote moving throughout. Either way, it looks like veins, so it's, it's pretty cool. And all the little stuff coming off of, of them and all that. And then these are the ports. So you have four ports so you can do combinations of your plugins for your symbiote accessories. So let's talk about them. Um, there is a fair amount to talk about. So the head, we have this ball peg that goes to another, it was a ball hinge that goes to another ball hinge. Um, it's like a double Reveltech joint, I guess. And the problem is, is that it doesn't stay as well as you'd like it to. Like there's too much give, you know, it, like there's too much space between friction uh, or between slight ratchet clicks, um, which is a bummer because if it worked, it would make this figure so much more expressive. That being said, the white shows through really well, you know, and there's a little bit of depth because of how they did it with this uh, additional piece that clasps on. And then the gums are painted tremendously, as is as are rather the teeth, and then the inside of the mouth has that same wash that the tongue has. The tongue itself, articulation-wise, we'll go ahead and plug that in. 
Uh, no, that's not. It, but it has the same ball hinge with the peg, so it swivels and then articulates as well. And then the jaw is on a hinge, obviously. It and then this is on a swivel. This part of it independently of the neck piece and all of like that's the problem all of that would work so well if it just held a bit in in uh held a bit better um the jaw also swivels around on um this neck piece so you can get some really crazy kind of mouth expressions which i think lends itself to the character and ultimately works let's back out of taste so the shoulders are pretty cool. We haven't seen anything like this before. The entire shoulder blade is on a swivel. So you can get all the way to there and then down to there. Um, now, as we talked about before, these figures aren't really intended to be standing sort of regularly, although this one doesn't look terrible. But they're more so for really dynamic poses. So this swivel allows the shoulder joint to change location it almost works as like a butterfly joint but it's more than that and i don't know how else to explain it it comes out to your ball hinge which swivels at both ends so the shoulder moves independently and then ratchets up and that ratchet holds like a champ and gets up about that far so it works really well and then down here we have the same type of ball hinge uh elbow that swivels at both ends for the forearm and that ratchets and gets you a full range as well for the wrist, same type of ball hinge, uh, and then it swivels at both ends, so you can get in, out, you know, or up, down. You just got to spin it at the other end, which I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting at the moment. And then all the fingers are on hinges, independently articulated. Now, it would have been nice if they weren't all curved. It's like, so these two fingers here are connected, and these two move independently. And then the thumb actually moves as well and swivels, I believe. Yes. So it would have been better if the, sec if the next knuckle could too, so you could like point like, you know, more dynamic hand poses. And it does eliminate the need to have extra hands. So I, I get it. Um, does he not do the white patch here anymore? Maybe they just, maybe they just opted out, or maybe there's different designs. Um, and then on this side, Look at that, like, oh, God, I love that alternate head sculpt. It's just it's just so emotive. Um, same articulation, so that works. Now we have what feels like a double, but it might not be. I just can't. It's got to be. Look at that range. So I think it's a double ball peg, basically. I mean, it's the same type of joint. It's those ball hinges. But I think it's one here connected to this piece, which is connected to another piece. But I could be wrong. Either way, you get the figure completely bent over, pretty much. I mean, bananas. And then all the way back to there. So that works really well. And that also swivels a bit. Then the bottom piece swivels a bit and you get a little bit of ball hinge on that one i think yes definitely uh, and then this is kind of a floating piece this midsection that you just adjust accordingly and the bottom piece swivels so you can get all the way around i just worked it all the way out but i can take this piece out for mr pinkerton while i'm there um we'll straighten him out the legs i think are on I can't, uh, so, all right, so the upper thigh piece just swivels, and then this piece moves independently around it, but that does limit the articulation a bit, which is a bit of a bummer, because you really do want to get his legs out a little bit more. Uh, the thigh does swivel around it, though, so you do get a little bit of play, and it's not terrible, um, but you, you just find yourself wanting, actually, the thigh does not swivel around it, pardon me. So yeah, that's that's a bit of a limitation. And then you get this single hinged knee that gets you all the way back to there. And then you get this uh, ball hinged ankle, which gets you the ankle tilt there, all the way back. And then uh, a Marvel Legends style rocker with a toe hinge that all works pretty well. So it's okay. It's just funny, like for for these things being so super articulated, this this hip section is a little bit of an issue. Um, ever so slight but it's definitely um, a bit hindered which you just don't really expect given how the rest of this thing sort of operates and how the spider-man and deadpool operated as well 
size comparison wise, there he is next to the Rebel Tech Spider Man, and I think bulk wise it looks good, but I, I kind of wish he was a, had a little bit more height on him. You know, I, I kind of wish that he was a little bit more imposing. I always imagine Venom as kind of like this towering villain over Spider-Man, and he doesn't really do that here. It's not hateful, and I think that once you get them both posed up, it'll be fine due to the bulk of the upper body of Venom, but I, I, overall, I wish he would have been just a little bit uh, larger. If you're thinking about swapping any of these out with uh, Marvel Legends characters, um, there is Marvel Legends Cyclops, uh, just for a height scale comparison so like I'm thinking about getting that Rebel Tech Wolverine because uh, I just think he looks awesome but yeah final thoughts wise uh, let me say that the the presence and color and all that the paintwork on this figure is absolutely 100% outstanding I love the sculpt as well unfortunately it's the articulation that eats this figure up and it's weird because these are supposed to be extremely uh, well articulated and they are it's just that some of it isn't as effective the joints in the neck should be a lot stiffer to allow you to get a more upward look on him as long as he's looking down he's fine the problem is is that his legs don't give you a great range of articulation in the hips so it's hard to get him into a dynamic pose where he's not going to be really hunched over and to be fair, when he's really hunched over, you can get him looking down and it looks great, like we see here. The problem is, is that when you have him posed on a shelf, rarely is he going to be looking down and be able to be seen, unless he's on a really high shelf, standing very close to the edge. So yeah, the thing is, is if the hips worked a little bit better and the neck regions worked a little bit better, I would give this a strong recommend. But as for now, I give it a soft recommend, and I'll tell you, I'm really looking forward to that Wolverine. I think they may have finally hit their stride with that Wolverine. It might be the most well-balanced between articulation and aesthetics that they've done so far. Anyway, hope that helps. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. So, real quick, when I was a young lad, I had McFarlane's entire run on Amazing Spider-Man in single issues. But uh, I started growing up a bit. Uh, my body started changing. My priorities became different. And my buddy Adam, partner in Nerd Rage Radio, offered to trade me his entire collection of adult magazines that he had taken from his father, who, it turns out, probably was reading them for the articles for my Spider-Man collection, and I jumped at the chance and gave them all away. Ultimately, it doesn't quite matter because I don't really keep my Lucy's anymore, but when I think back on it, I really caught the, the short end of that trade. But, fun story.